Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in Hollywood right now. So the landscape has definitely changed when you look at film. It went from movie theater. Well, it went from like blockbuster, movie theater era, DVD era, streaming mm-hmm. era. But what's next? That's the next. That's the question. Yeah, I'm that's thinking. what I want to ask you. You transitioning. Yeah. Hollywood yeah. shoddy, right? What, what's <laughs> next? So for... that's, the question, that's the question that people have to start asking because nothing lasts forever. And um, okay, we're in streaming, but we've been in streaming for a while now. Mm-hmm. So at some point, there's gonna be something after streaming. So I think that the companies that can, you know, already start to plan for that will be, you know, ahead of the curve. Um, and that's a conversation worth having. Like, what is the next form of entertainment after streaming? I, I think we tapped into it, but I want to say it too early. Um, do you think the content houses like Netflix, and I know some people hated my Netflix take, but currently have $27.7 billion worth of liabilities. Um, if How much longer do you think Netflix and companies such as Netflix can continue to pay $100 million for a series for people to binge watch it in a weekend and never return to it before that model turns over? It's going to be, it's not, not too long. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. And that's why those companies like Disney have such a uh, strong advantage because, you know, when you talk about vertical integration, they're not just relying on content. So when you look mm-hmm. at Disney, you have the theme parks, you have the cartoons, you have Marvel, you have, con- so now it's like, yes, you can do Exactly, sports. So now, instead of just, you know, one missile, you got 10 missiles. So, you know, Netflix is a great company, one of the best companies ever created, but it's still kind of difficult to compete with somebody that has so much in its arsenal. Yeah. And I, so I said that to say Apple. I know we always harp on Apple, but I think the next content um, giant... Mega power. Will be, will be, yeah, I think Apple will be a, a, a mega power and not just space just because they have so much cash at the disposal and so much resources at the disposal. Everybody, well, not everybody, but the vast majority of people, especially in America, have iPhones. Yeah. So they have a tremendous advantage already built in with the iPhone. I think mm-hmm. they're still figuring out how to actually make that work as far as their content space is concerned, but mm-hmm. they're working on it. And um, that's something that they already have a tremendous advantage in that space. So I think Apple is something that, you know, it's interesting to watch when it comes to the the content wars because a lot of people are not really talking about Apple, yeah. but you know the streaming companies at some point they're gonna they're gonna have to transition their business model. And I think that one of the reasons why Apple may not be pushing so hard into streaming is that they're already thinking about the next leg of content, and maybe they're already saying, okay, we really can't win the streaming war, but we can potentially win the next war coming. And if those Apple glasses come out, go ahead, Trey. No, I was going to say they're going for it. They just played Academy Award for Best Picture. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, They they won Emmys for um, the the, the Good Morning America show. Um, Mm -hmm. They're in the space, but like you said, they have the ability to literally dominate the space. It's just about how they want to go about it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, The fact that is Apple is is always, you got to keep your I mean, and with Tim Cook being there as a great operator, like he's always looking at, I mean, and I hate to say it, every company that we invest in, we have to look to see what the net profit is. Like we haven't even mentioned, and I said it last week, if Google, who has a better profit margin, like they get all their content on YouTube for free. What a genius business model. What <laughs> if they revive Breaking Bad and throw breaking bad 50 million and say hey put it on youtube would that not be a top show so when i'm saying netflix is paying too much and we've seen it with sofi we're seeing it now with evergrand there isn't an amount of money that you can have we're seeing it with china we'll talk about that later in the presentation there isn't an amount of money that you can have that you cannot overspend and go into debt so you have to keep your eyes on how much you are spending avoid lifestyle creep in your personal finances, but also in your business. Uh, like Netflix is a, a company, but when you're spending that much money on content and people are complaining about spending 13 bucks to watch $15 billion worth of movies, 
you have a horrible business proposition that isn't going to last long. But shout out to Apple. And, and they missed the opportunity for live sports. Like that's a big one. They missed the they missed the opportunity, and it, it may not seem like much, but Amazon getting um, the baseball contracts. They had uh, they got Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. They missed like Disney already has Hulu under the umbrella. They have ESPN under the umbrella. So, I mean, the number one thing watched in the country is always the Super Bowl. Yeah, right. Well, it's usually sporting events, right? Most people gather around to watch those things. So the opportunity to have that, I mean, they they missed or- the part from. Or even college sports. Like, how have you not huh? went there? There are certain markets that are going to be everlasting that are always going to have support. So, I think, yeah, it was a huge mistake to be able to miss out on that. It would have been great if they would have been, been able to get rights to the Super Bowl. Um, but, yeah, they have to restructure. And I know they're trying to make a move into gaming. It's a little bit too late. You have some fierce competitors in Apple, gaming, Microsoft, Sony, PlayStation. It's kind of tough. And I, I also think that, um, you know, it's one of these things where Netflix, you know, you have to pay it's a subscription based model. Right. But mm-hmm. but in history, the free content has always been the most valuable. If you really think about it, like even if you look at TV, like NBC, ABC, Fox, that's where the giants play. Like, of course, you know, HBO, Cinemax, things of that nature. But I look at it like, and the best companies do a combination of both. So if you look at, you know, Disney, yeah, they have, you know, uh, ESPN Plus and they have these different streaming services. And even ESPN might not be part of your basic package. But, uh, you know, when you have ABC, different things of that nature. So it's like, in Elysia, we have content that is free. Most of our content is free. If... You want your handheld and you want more, you know, it's direct guidance, one on one guidance than EYL University is a subscription. Mm-hmm. Red Panda, same thing, right? Where you have Market Mondays, which is free. So now the best business model is a combination of both. That's the That's best. Jim might clip that up. <laughs> Here's the business. I mean, Terrence came and said it when we were in Miami. It's like, even with AMC, if Breaking Bad and Walking Dead were behind a paywall, they would have died in season two. You have yeah. to have a free way to drive them in and then back it up with the subscription on the back end. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and like I said, you know, when you, when you look at a company like Disney, they've done it. They've done it. And I don't think people even pay attention to that. Like they have free. Most of, the, a lot of, most of their content is free. But then they have pay as well. So I think, you know, Apple is, is going to follow that business model. And that's the part that Netflix is going to struggle because once you come out and you now it's kind of hard to have Netflix is free now because the whole, your whole business model is based only on subscription based model. Yeah. So how do you compete? Like you said, how do you compete with YouTube? How do you compete with things that's actually free? You know, some people might might be willing to pay for it, but some people might not be willing to pay for it. And then you add the fact that they're trying to put ads in now inside of their, you know, I mean, their programming, which is like, we're not used to that. We're not accustomed to that. Like, we're accustomed to seeing ads on Hulu, right? Like, we're accustomed, even if we watch the Disney Channel, like, as I with our kids, like, we're used to seeing commercials inside of these, these programs. I'm not used to seeing commercials on Netflix. So, like, that might, you might lose an audience for even trying to change, you know, the business plan in that sense, because it's kind of late in the game, right? But you need to figure out how to add revenue, obviously. Getting ad dollars in makes sense, but your audience it hasn't been you, they haven't been taught to to look and view your content like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they can't do the coming to America too and just have product placements everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was on big ass. Shout out to Eddie for forgetting every bag on earth. <laughs> My goodness, but like you have to learn to adjust. Um, and here's the scary part about Disney. Disney, in my opinion, does not have 15 great shows on Disney Plus yet. Wait yeah. till they get some amazing shows that we love to watch. Whew. Scary hours. It is going to be tough. It's another reason why I always tell people, no matter what the business is, you should not compete on price alone. Because somebody will always be able to beat you or have more resources and more capital. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely going to be tough. And, and we can't forget HBO. Like HBO and Discovery, that, that move... Because when you talk about dedicated audience, dedicated following, they have shows that have 
right? Like we last night, House of uh, House of Dragons premiered. Like if you look at the pay scale of how much money that the Game of Thrones has brought to the network, we're talking over like three billion dollars. Like that's a core audience. If that show is now you yep. can binge watch that. You know what I mean? Like they have shows like that. I, I was on the plane yesterday watching Insecure. Like, damn, I really missed the show. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you just got a core audience of following, and they have those shows historically have had, whether it was The Wire or Sopranos or Sex in the City. They just continuously put out good content. Right, and so now it makes sense that they can house it because people are gonna follow it and watch it. Yeah. And of course, companies smartened up. <clears throat> and the crazy part is. Netflix was an innovator, but a lot of times the people, the, the part that people miss about innovation, sometimes the innovator ends up with arrows in his back. So once companies smart up and say, well, why would I license you my content for you to make billions when I can put it on my own platform and make billions and slowly eat away market share? You have to figure out a way to create something and do something that no one else in the world can do. For HBO, it is to make timeless, amazing shows every single decade i have no clue how to do it disney that market that they have with children to grab them from three years old to mature them all the way through 35 years old with espn amazing um i think at some point microsoft will probably put in a bid to buy netflix if they go underneath 100 bucks this day red panda anthem and what's up this day. Panda, what's good? Red Panda, <laughs> your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.